So stuttering in your videos, long load times, choppy playback, what's the easiest and quickest thing you can do to potentially alleviate all of that? Well, in this video today, let me show you a single device that you can use on your 4K Fire Stick or Fire TV Cube, and this really can make a night and day difference to your performance and overall video playback. Now, there's no clickbait here, guys. I'm talking about a gigabit ethernet adapter, which will work on your 4K Fire Stick and Fire TV Cube. So let's open that up. Let's see how that works. Let's go through some very important benchmarks and speed test and then you can decide whether this device is for you so with all of that being said let's get started if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials the latest fire stick android and android tv tips and tricks then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it's a small click from you but it makes a big difference to me thank you now just before we jump into the world of wired connectivity and wired streaming and as you guys know i always prefer to stream over a wired connection versus wireless but just for clarification, because I do get this question asked a lot. And that question is, if I have to use wireless, should I be using 2.4 gigahertz or should I be using five gigahertz? And my answer to that always is, if you want better quality signal, better range, then use 2.4 gigahertz and use five gigahertz if you're looking for faster speed, but if you are closer to your router or router, because a 2.4 gigahertz band will travel much better through walls and other solid objects. So if your device is further away from your router or router, then you may get a much more solid and more consistent connection by using the 2.4 gigahertz band. And on the flip side, if your device is much closer to the router and both devices do support five gigahertz Wi-Fi, then you will typically get much better speed using that. So that's really the differences between 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. But again, guys, as I always say, if you do have the choice, always go for wired just to give you that more solid and consistent connectivity. Okay, so in the box, we get a small thank you note. You're welcome. We get a small installation CD. So if you do want to use this on a Macintosh or a computer, you get some drivers for that if it's required. And lastly, we get the actual unit, guys. So we can see this is the Ugreen USB 3 multifunction hub. Now it's multifunction because we have three USB 3 ports. And for the people that don't know, normally you can identify it's USB 3 because either they're colored in blue or they have a small SS under the logo. So these are three full speed USB 3 ports, which is like 10 times faster than USB 2. And on this side, we have a full speed gigabit, which is 1000 meg ethernet adapter. Now, in case you're wondering, can you actually get the full 1000 megabit speed on our Fire Stick? Well, the real limiting factor here is actually the USB 2 port. So when you do plug this in via the OTG cable, the port we're actually using is a USB 2 port on the 4K Fire Stick. So an USB 2, as we know, has a max upper limit of 480 meg. So, so this could be a thousand meg or even 10,000 meg, but, but the actual limiting thing is gonna be the USB 2 port, but still having 480 meg is still much faster than having 100 meg, which is why I would opt for a gigabit adapter compared to 100 meg. So this is basically what we're gonna be plugging into our Fire Stick. Now, if you do want to use this onto your Android box or onto your laptop, literally just plug this in and you're more or less good to go. But on a Fire Stick, we need to use an OTG cable, which is this thing here. So as demonstrated yesterday, I'm just gonna plug this into my normal 4K Fire Stick. And where the power cable normally goes, I'm gonna plug it into this. And then we can see I now have a full size USB port that I can use. And in this case, instead of me plugging a normal USB device into it, I'm going to plug this USB hub into it. So, and we should now be able to access all these three USB three ports as well as the gigabit adapter. So let me plug that in right now. Okay, so I've just plugged it in. I'm gonna leave it at the front just so I can show you me plugging things in, just so you can see exactly how it's working. Now the adapter I took off was this one, which is the standard Amazon ethernet adapter. So this does give you the ability to have an ethernet cable on your Fire Stick, but as I wanted to have the USB three ports and gigabit speed is why I decided to change this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna test is, can I actually use a USB hard drive or a USB three memory stick and access content that I've got on there? So let me get that now. So this is a USB three memory stick. It's a 16 gig in size, so not the biggest. Let me just see if I can now plug that in and access the content on there. Let's take that off. Let's plug that in. Okay, that's gone in like that. Now let me see if I can actually access that anywhere. So if I just go to my, okay, if I go down into videos, we can see it's now identified my USB 3 memory stick. We can see it's called Kingston. I can now click on that. And let's go to the 4K folder. 
So this content will be streamed by the USB 3 hard drive. Let's see if it actually works properly. And we can see this is actually a HDR file. So let's see if the Fire Stick 4K can correctly decode the HDR content. And let's see, because this monitor here is a HDR monitor, so it should be able to pick up the stream. So let's try that now. Okay, there we can see it's identified the HDR stream and that's working absolutely fine. I mean, when you see HDR images, guys, it really does look amazing. Really vibrant, really clear, really sharp. And this is playing super smoothly from this USB 3 flash drive through the USB 3 hub onto my 4K Fire Stick. And that's working great. Let's try another one. Really nice looking, guys. I'm really impressed. I mean, we knew that the 4K Fire Stick can easily handle this kind of content, but just to see it being accessed from a USB 3 memory stick, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, let's stop that. Okay, so we've demonstrated that we can easily access content that we've got stored on a USB memory stick or even a USB hard drive, put it into a USB hub, and that can then be accessed through our 4K Fire Stick. So the USB ports are definitely working fine. Let's now test the Ethernet. And just a quick interruption here, guys. If you are enjoying this kind of content, if you want to see more videos on the 4K Fire Stick or the second generation Fire TV Cube or the latest NVIDIA Shield Pro or even your generic Android TV boxes, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. Now, before we test the Ethernet speeds, let's actually do a couple of speed tests without using the network cable. So let me just unplug that now. Okay, so we can see we've now unplugged that. Let me bring up the speed test application. Okay, so this is the results of speed test one. So normally when I'm plugged into the ethernet, I get around about 70, 72 megs. So this is just a little bit under. Let's run that test again. So that was the end of test one. Let's do test two. Okay, so we got 60, 65, 66, 67, 68. Okay, so we got 67, so we got a little bit faster, but what I'm actually trying to demonstrate here, let's do the third test, is the thing with wireless is, I mean, especially with the latest AC wireless, it, it is very, very fast, but, but the thing you always have to take into account is with wireless, there's always chance of interference, there's chance of things getting in the way, depending on how far you're from the router, all these things can actually affect your wireless speeds. Now with the wired connection, you always get a more consistent speed, which is why once again, I always do prefer to stream or do all of my accessing or do all of my content consumption through an ethernet cable compared to wireless. Okay, so the third result is 64 megs. So we had 60 something, then 67, then 64, or something like that anyway. So that was basically the three speeds that we got. Let's now plug in the ethernet cable and let's see how the speed changes. So let me just show you how easy it is to plug this in. I mean, we can see here that I'm connected to my wireless network. And as soon as I plug this cable in, within a couple of seconds, we can see that just disappears and it says, it knows we have a wired connection now. So literally it's just plug and play. Now, before I just do the speed test, just to show you the difference, the other thing I should mention is in the last few weeks, I have actually changed my wireless router to the Nighthawk gaming router. Now that really is a beast of a router. It has four high gain aerials, has latest wireless speeds and everything else. So what I'm trying to say is the wireless speeds I got in my test were actually pretty good. Now maybe in your house, you don't have such a powerful router, or maybe your router is really far away. You would see the benefit of having an ethernet cable a lot more than me, just because my wireless connection was already so solid. So maybe in your case, because it's not so great, this would actually give you a lot more benefit, but let's just see what the test is like anyway. All right, so we've now plugged in the ethernet cable. Let's go back to the speed test. Okay, so test one, we can see we've already crossed the 70 barriers. So we're at 71 meg for test one. Let's try test two. Okay, it's getting a bit higher. But, but again, guys, we've got 72. So, I mean, we can see it is a little bit faster than my wireless. But again, depending on where your router is, you may see the difference between wireless versus wired a lot more. Okay, so test two, we got 72 meg. And then the third one. Okay, so test three, we got 68 megs. So generally we can say it is a little bit faster than wireless, but certainly it's a lot more stable. And the more tests we'll do, we'll definitely see that you do get that stability and more stable connection when you're using a wire compared to wireless. Okay, let's back out of that. Let's just do a quick test with IP Vanish and just see does a cable also provide a better connection. So let me just connect to a local server in the UK. Okay, we can see we now made a connection to a VPN server in the UK. Uh, 
Actually, let's just try the speed test application. Okay, we can even see that the speed test application has identified that we are using a connection over IP Vanish. Let's now click on go. So we're now doing a VPN speed test using the adapter on our 4K Fire Stick. And we can see guys, that really is an impressive speed. So to get that kind of speed over VPN, I think it's fantastic. And which is one of the main reasons why I do recommend IP Vanish. Okay, so we can see upload, we get a 16 meg speed on VPN and download we get 64 megs. So it's very, very similar to my native speed. So I'm definitely happy with that. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Please do leave me a comment below. And let me know if you guys are currently using a wireless connection or wired. Do let me know what you think about this video. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.